The woman who caused the death of my best friend just messaged me. My friend, Mark, killed ended himself six years ago because of a girl named Amy, a schoolmate, who accused him of assault. It costed him everything, his scholarship, most of his friends, and even most of his family members abandoned him. His own mother told him to die and burn in hell before going no contact. The only people who believed him were his dad and me. Why? Because the two of us were together all day, playing video games in his dad's house as his parents are divorced. During the night Amy claimed that Mark attacked her. I was staying for a week in their house, and the date Amy mentioned was the second day of my stay. Amy and Mark knew each other because they're both in the volleyball team of our university. She's not a classmate, she's not a friend, and she's not even an acquaintance. According to the people I've previously talked to, Amy was involved in a girls-only night out with her doormates. They've been having deep conversations, and when Amy was asked if she ever had experience in being violated, she blurted out Mark's full name and a specific date and time. After their night out, the other girls immediately spread this accusation all over Twitter, Instagram, and Facebook, calling Mark a criminal. They even messaged some professors and the dean of our department. Amy's family tried to press charges, but the case was dropped after Mark's dad showed countless evidence proving Mark's whereabouts the entire day, including a video of me playing League of Legends while he makes fun of me by being a terrible player, taken by Mark himself that he posted on his Twitter during the exact time Amy claimed that Mark did it to her. During all of this, Amy was nowhere to be found. Of course, things didn't magically stop after proving that Mark was legally innocent. And after six months of enduring continuous violent harassment from Amy's family and her boyfriend, death threats both online and in person from schoolmates and neighbors, and being abandoned by almost everyone he loved, Mark took his own life in December 2, 2017. People freaking celebrated his death because people still believe that he did it. It was one of the most painful experiences that I've ever had in my entire life. He was like a brother to me, and he was one of the kindest and most awesome people that I know. The anger and the grief are still so freaking ripe in my heart even after years of therapy. Then yesterday, Amy messaged me after six years of silence. The first thing she said, I'm sorry. She freaking admitted to randomly saying Mark's name because he was the first person she thought of. She panicked because she never had an experience in being violated, and thought that she was out of place because most of the girls in that party had experienced it before. She told me that it was because she was young and stupid. She justified herself by saying that she never thought that it would go out of hand, because the other girls promised that their conversation would be a secret. She thought that Mark wouldn't be affected because they don't know each other and have very different social circles. She was too afraid to say anything because her lie spread way too freaking much for her to control it. That was the reason why she was nowhere to be found during those times where everything went to hell. I asked her why she was telling me this, and she told me that she had been feeling guilty for the past six years, and thought that it was time for her to come clean because her therapist told her so. Her family doesn't know. Her boyfriend who she's been with for eight years now, doesn't know. Mark's family doesn't know. And all of the people who believed her didn't know. She only admitted it to me. I'm so freaking angry that I can't even put it into words. This woman killed my best friend, and thinks that everything will be okay afterwards. She's the freaking reason a good person like Mark is now forever gone. I haven't replied to her, and I'm afraid that I would just say so many horrendous things to her. I don't want to tell Mark's dad because he's still going through grief and has spiraled deep into depression since Mark passed. I'm tempted to spread our conversation online, but I know that it would drag me down to the same level as her and her friends. I freaking hate everything right now. Now for the top advice. If she really is sorry, you should probably get her to confess to the police. The therapist told her she should come clean, and she tells one of the few people that knew the truth, she's a freaking coward. She was a coward from the start. She didn't stop the lies from spreading more because she was afraid to admit that she was lying, hid the secret for six years, and when she finally gathered the courage to confess, she did to someone who already knew it. Shameful. And because she felt out of place. How in the world is that reason justified? And being young and stupid. She saw people harassing and accusing Mark for such a long time and didn't even say anything. To hell with being the bigger person. Drag her. An innocent person is dead because of her lies. She literally made up a story to fit in. She was old enough to know better. OP should lawyer up, now he has more evidence. This. OP your conversation with her and her admission could give your friend's father enough to pursue a wrongful death charge against her. You need to talk to your friend's family about her confession. Tell her if she is really sorry to attempt to clear it up in the same circles she spread it, publicly, to her whole friends and family, the college, is family, everywhere. Saying it to the one person who knew it was false, is a cop-out. 
If she won't, then put that in the admission up yourself showing you gave her a chance. She doesn't get to just pay lip service and feel better, clear his name, or carry around the guilt of crushing that man into ending his life. So sorry for your loss and the unfairness of it all. This is the right answer. If she can't confess to everyone, is she truly remorseful? She is trying to get you to do it because it will be less embarrassing for it to come from your mouth instead of hers. Next story. I messed up by helping ruin my son's life. My son has been in college since last fall. Last November, my 16-year-old stepdaughter brought up allegations that my son had used her repeatedly for several years. I confronted my son and he categorically denied it. But I knew that even though he was my son, I could not defend him for such an awful act. So my wife and I reported him to the authorities. My son was arrested in December and held in prison for a several weeks because I refused to provide him bail money. He was eventually expelled from his Ivy League college. In the middle of January, my stepdaughter broke down and admitted she lied about everything. She had actually been sleeping with her boyfriend and was scared the news would reach us. The charges were dismissed and my son was released immediately, but the damage was done. His first girlfriend from college ended things with him. The news spread about the allegations, and all his childhood friends have decided to just stay away from him, even though I called each and every one of them personally. I have called the school and explained the situation, and even though they sympathized, they said he needed to reapply for the next school year and go through the admissions process again. My son is understandably furious at us. He has moved back home and refuses to talk to me at all. Both my wife and I have apologized to him repeatedly. We have banned my stepdaughter from our home permanently, and she has been sent to live with her father in another state. My wife and I also agreed to completely disinherit her from our wills. It has been a very painful situation, and all of us started therapy. The realization of how badly I ruined my son's life hit me when I picked up his first prescription of antidepressants today. I bowled my eyes out in my car. He is the pride and joy of my life. He is outgoing, funny, intelligent and the kindest person I know. But when I handed him his medication, I could not even recognize him. He locks himself in his room, does not eat properly and has lost several pounds so far. Whenever I try talking to him, I just see the hate he has for me in his eyes. I don't know if I can ever get him to love me again. I know he is on Reddit very often. Ted, if you are reading this, I want to tell you again how sorry your stepmom and I are. I promise I will get you into college again. I know I can't get you back the year you lost. But I will do everything in my power to make this right. Everything I have has always been for you. I hope you will give me a chance to fix this. I love you so much it hurts. I failed as a father and I hope one day you will forgive me. You know, I was kinda angry at the stepdaughter for lying like she did, but then I realized, as soon as she gave the accusation, you put your son in jail and got him expelled. And as soon as you found out she lied, you sent her away and disinherited her. If she told you she was sexually active, you probably would have sent her to live with her grandparents and never spoke to her again. You people managed to ruin two kids' lives. So you reported him to the police without double, triple, quadruple checking everything, especially when you knew how decent your son was. This is by far the most disturbing thing I've read on here this whole week, or maybe month. No sympathy towards you at all. You deserve what's coming to you. The only person I feel bad for is your son. I don't know if I can ever get him to love me again. I doubt it. If it happens, it will take years, maybe decades. Couple of things, first, don't ever refer to this screw up as the year he lost. He lost way more than a year, and if you can't see that, you're in even bigger trouble than you know. Secondly, your son is probably now a self-harm risk. You need to make damn sure he stays on his meds. Your feelings, your needs, your comfort are all utterly secondary now. You'll probably never fix what you've done. That said, you now have an indisputable obligation to provide for him, indefinitely, no matter what. You took his bright future and destroyed it because you believed one of your children over another. Why? You've not answered anyone yet. You need to surface and respond. I can't fathom why any parent would do what you did, especially to a child who, it seems, had never given you reason to doubt his moral compass. It sickens me. I don't understand why you're posting. The promises you make above should be made to your son directly. Using Reddit to announce them seems like a cheap toxic attempt to shame him into interacting with you and will probably have the opposite effect. If you were my father, I'd never forgive you and I ever got my life straight again, I'd cut all ties. If your son ever lets you back in, I hope you spend the rest of your life thanking him for that in concrete ways. Sad story. I don't think he'll ever forgive you. I wouldn't. If I had done that to my son, I wouldn't expect him to forgive me. Probably the worst thing you could have ever done to him. I know that's horrible news, but you will just have to hope he at least tolerates you for the rest of his life. 
Stuff like that will follow him for the rest of his life, and he will be constantly reminded of it in every relationship he has in the future when he has to explain it to potential partners. Every time he applies for a job, I'd imagine it will come up. This is probably the worst TIFU I've ever seen. Last story. I read a post about a woman who escaped from her dangerous boyfriend, and it may have saved my life. My wife is the breadwinner. We started off as a team, having met in college. I was studying to be a nurse, and she was studying to be an accountant. She was further along in school than I was, so when she became pregnant unplanned, it made sense that she continue on getting her degree after the baby came, and I'd stay home until our little ones were school-aged. Unfortunately our plans halted when one of our baby boys were born two months early. He has several special needs at this point in time, and needs full-time care. I was devoted to him, putting off my studies and social life, to be at home with him full-time. My wife loved our arrangement though, and so did I. That happiness quickly disappeared, when my wife became jealous of the bonds I had with each of our children. She started pulling away even more as time went on. Her antics escalated, from yelling and cursing at me, to throwing things and punching me. Luckily our children have never visually witnessed any of the physical harm that I know of, but I am sure they've heard it. We got into a horrible argument last week, and I packed a bag for the kids, and I and we went to my mom's house. We are safe thank god, but my wife went on a rampage as soon as we left. She took permanent marker, scissors, and spray paint to all of our stuff. She wrote curse words and extremely vulgar and graphic descriptions of me on all of their sheets and bedding. And she cut up a lot of their clothes. She did it to make sure she could humiliate me, since I was refusing to speak with her. My kids do not understand, and I can't help them to because I'm afraid it will just be more traumatic for them. I just hate this because I can't replace their stuff, and I'm at a loss. I have been afraid of my wife for an extremely long time, and sometime last year, I started saving up. I knew we had to make our escape after I read a woman's post about how she finally had the courage to leave her dangerous boyfriend. I know I'm doing the right thing, but man is it hard. I can't vent to anyone other than my mom, because my wife has isolated me from everyone I've ever cared about. I don't have much family as it is, but had a great group of friends. I actually ran into a couple of our mutual friends the other day, and they asked me how I was doing. They already knew quite a bit, so I decided to vent. I hadn't really said too much when they looked at each other and kind of laughed and said something along the lines of, men can't be physically mistreated by a woman. Apparently because I'm bigger than she is, I can't be punched by her. So here I am, venting to Reddit because I cannot hold it in any longer. My own friends are on her side. No one sees things for as they are. I look like a deadbeat because she makes more money than I do, and it looks like I don't contribute. I'm so broken up inside. Now for the comments. It takes incredible strength to leave an awful relationship, and you are doing great. This part is important, document everything. You need this to protect yourself and your children. You will all be fine, but you need to take pictures of everything and make a police report. Try and communicate via text so you have written evidence. You need all of this to help you get full custody and a restraining order. There needs to be a pattern of mistreatment, so document and report everything you can, with as much evidence and witnesses as you can, along with dates. I wish you luck freeing yourself and your children of her. The legal system is not kind to men in custody cases, so I'm going to second this with great emphasis. I'm not a family law lawyer myself, but my colleague is, and we just watched her go through a horrible case, where the wife was framing the husband despite her being the dangerous one. Document everything. I'm not trying to frighten you, you are absolutely doing the right thing, but document everything she does. Take pictures or recordings, date them, record the times, anything like that. If your country or state or province etc. allows it, then record every interaction with her. Make a police report, or several. Try and contact the friends you do have, and let them know what's happening so she can't lie to them first, and turn them against you. Then when you can, take her to court for child support as well, if you wish. I am wishing you all the best OP. Take pictures of everything. It will help you in the long run. Spousal harm, regardless of gender, is mistreatment. Men get mistreated way more than anyone can imagine, because of the stupid mindset men can't be mistreated, they stay silent until they snap. Good on you for having the courage. Kids don't need to know the ends of what's really happening. When they are older, they will understand. From one DV survivor to another, you got this. Stand your ground and don't go back. You're more than welcome to DM me if you want. Hang in there. And congrats on leaving. Except for a couple of details, this could be my brother's childhood best friend. My brother put his foot down and said he could not be in his friend's life as long as his friend stayed married to his toxic, awful, and very dangerous wife. 
My brother said, I'll be there for you when you figure things out and leave her. But I can't be around you and your kids now, because I'm going to want to drag her out of your life, and my butt will end up in prison. My brother didn't actually say this verbatim. There were a lot more F-bombs, and he said he wanted to break her neck. My brother is still close to his friend's parents and siblings, so my brother still hears things. But they know to not have my brother around when she's there. She moved on to verbally and emotionally mistreating the kids. OP, if your wife is jealous of your kids, you can believe she'd start to verbally and emotionally harm them too. OP, you were right to run. Things with this woman will not get better. Document everything, emails, texts, and pictures. If she sends a nasty voicemail, save it. If she calls, record it. If she cuts you off financially, make note of that. It's going to be hard, but lots of people are pulling for you, even if your so-called friends are clueless dopes.